Alexa, shade on. Alexa, shade off. Alexa, office shade on. Alexa, office shade off. So this is the deep processing of the one of the blind. As you can see right in here, I took this uh, gear section off. You have to take this gear section off. You can just pop them out and then later on if you want, you can put them back again. You just, with this thing in a place, it's not gonna work. You have to take this part off. And as you can see in the other end, I installed one coupler right in here. That one end of it is going to be eight millimeter receiver that the motor is going to sit right in here. I'm going to provide more pictures when I install the motor on it. And because the casing in here is a plastic, I can just put a controller in this side. Okay, now this is in a disassemble format. As you can see, I put the axle out of this uh, three drum that is uh, rotating and closing and opening the shutter of course this part was in the end and manually you could rotate in this thing with a handle long handler that it has to open in and closing the shutter you have to take this part off it's just snapping out don't throw them away you can just keep them in there and later on if you decided to go in back to the manual format you can install them back again uh, so i do have this shaft in one end of it uh, i installed this uh, coupler that has a this end of it has a eight millimeter uh, hole that it goes inside the shaft of the stepper and get uh, tied with these set screws i will show you another picture when i put everything back together in this picture now you can see i installed the model this model has the gear reduction of the 5.8 to 1 and then the coupler that is connected to the axle that it's going to rotate it and open and close the blind let me show this picture again of course this is just going to be applied to the blinds that is going to be two inches wide because the motor is a little too big this is the stepper motor and the program is written somehow after it moving the motor to the position that i want no power going to go to the motor in that moment so the motor doesn't get hot and it doesn't have so much wear because I don't, to hold them in that position, I don't need to have any uh, electromagnetic uh, friction. This is how did I put the MCU and buck converter and the driver plus the capacitor together. Uh, this is the driver TMC2208. It's much, much more quieter than the other driver that I used to use. This driver that, uh, where is the other driver? It's a 4988, A4988. This driver is extremely noisy when it runs the model. So this is much more quieter. And this is the way that I put them together. This is the MCU, um, ESP32, and this is a TMC2208. In back of it, I do have a capacitor, and this is gonna be the uh, 12 to 24 volt that I can apply right in here. Now I'm gonna put them together, and I'll show you again how it's gonna be the final product gonna be look like. I just use a drop of the hot glue to attach the connector as well as the driver board in back of the MCU. That is gonna be compact and small. This is the whole thing. Of course, I do have a couple more connection to make and then I will show you the uh, final product. This is it. This is the final control module right there. 
I'll just open them up and show it to you guys right there in the top is the MCU in the bottom is a driver capacitor in between driver and the uh, MCU and I do have a buck converter right in here I'm gonna feed the voltages 12 to 24 volt right in here and then everything gonna work I probably gonna put some hot glue in the top of all of this connector right in here too that's it and this thing is gonna get plugged in right there that's it couple things that I need to remind everyone uh, it wasn't the case for me if your signal that you're receiving is not strong enough instead of using the regular ESP32 you can use this type of uh, ESP32 that has external antenna of course the only problem is going to be a little bigger and the cost these are going to be more expensive with the antenna and the cable that is coming with in my case, I install about seven of these and I just use the regular ESP32. As I mentioned, in bottom of your web server, you can find out after you install this thing in a place to see how strong is the signal that you are receiving. Because when you debug them, if it doesn't work, you want to know, hey, does it get enough uh, signal? Does it communicate and everything else? The second thing that I forgot to mention is this bulk converter that I do have. It's this little Billy bulk converter right in here. Because I'm just using one power supply. Of course, this is my test uh, uh, jig that I do have for debugging. I use them. Is the, the real system that I show you is much smaller. It's just going to be almost the size of this when you put them inside the shadow. Uh, this bulk converter uh, changing the voltages between 6 till 24 volt to the 5 volt for the ESP32 that you can feed in them in a VA in and ground. So this is a bulk converter. I bought, uh, I believe, four of these for uh, ten dollars. So the whole system is going to be include of the bulk converter, ESP32, uh, and uh, motor driver. Don't use this motor driver, as I mentioned. Use the uh, TMC2208. And capacitor, of course, you need the connector to connecting the uh, driver to your cable that it goes to your motor. If you have any question, please let me know. These are the two uh, bipolar uh, stepper that I use in my shade or blinds. Uh, one of them has a, a turn ratio of the 5.18 to 1 and the other one doesn't have any gearbox. It's just dependent to your shade. Uh, if the shade, it can be easily rotate, the shaft can easily rotate to uh, open and close, you can use this. Or if it's a little harder and it need more torque, you have to use this motor. This motor, I bought three of them for $25. This motor, each one of them with a gearbox on it, it cost about $28 and uh, 50 cents. So the project, uh, that I do have for each shade that it used the motor with a gearbox cost me around $50 a little less than $50 and the shade that it used the motor without the gearbox it cost me less than $30 that was included of the ESP32 and the driver and the capacitor and also make sure do not use this kind of driver that is going to be the a4988 uh, they are uh, very creating a lots of noise and the motor is start vibrating and making so much uh, noise definitely use the uh, tmc2208 the, they are the this driver is going to cost you about dollar fifty. Those drivers are going to cost you about five dollars, but they are not at all. You cannot compare the amount of the sound that the this driver uh, causing on the motor compared with the other one. The other one is very quiet. Now I'm just going to show you the uh, living room that I install uh, this motor on a four blinds and. Uh, show you how they getting closed and open and you can judge yourself the amount of the noise that they create. Four shape in here 
uh, three of them are smaller and one of them is about 70 inches wide the one that is 70 inches wide i use the smaller motor and for this tree i use the motor with a higher torque now i'm just going to issue the command and see how this thing going to work and you can see how much noise is being created alexa shade on Alexa, shade off. That's it. I create this sketch right in here to generate such a web server as you can see right in here for the different blind or shutter or shade. So each one of those uh, ESP32, they do gonna have a different address and the port number. And then you end up with a page like this for each one of them. And then you can just come right in here and put the number of the turn that you want. The resolution, I put them for the one eighth of, minimum is one eighth of the third. Uh, why you say just minimum? Because some of your motor has its own turn ratio too, for instance, the big model right in here has a turn ratio of the uh, 5.18 to the 1.2 and also the driver has some turn ratio too. For that reason, I introduced this little input from the user right in here. You can put the integer number in here, any number that you want. And then it's going to go inside the program, it divided by 1.8 and then it's been showing up right in here. And then if you do have the... Uh, different uh, turn ratio on your motor, that is not gonna be showing up right in here. And you don't care, you just take a look at to see when your shutter get closed or open, based on that, you keep putting the number right in here. For instance, you can start with the 20, you see it didn't get completely open, you can raise them up or lower them up. Remember to just put the integer number in here. If you put a fraction number, it's going to work, but the fraction number is not going to be saved in a memory. And then if the power goes down and it's coming back up, just the integer part of your fraction number is going to be uh, saved. For that reason, just use the integer number. It has divided by uh, one eight. It means it has a minimum resolution of the one eight of the turn. And remember that to closing and opening the shutter, you just need a button quarter turn so if you need a quarter turn why does it shows right in here 2.75 because the uh, motor had some sort of the uh, turn ratio too as well as the driver the driver for instance has a turn ratio of the five that i'm using it so you can just put the number right in here that you want submitted and then you try it close and open it and then see what is going to happen so in the bottom of this page also Whenever you install in your uh, ESP32, I show what uh, what is the uh, string of your signal. That's the uh, ESP32 is seen because sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, maybe it's uh, too far from your router or whatever it is. The number is being showing up in the bottom. <clears throat> so for the people that they do not use the uh, echo, they are going to end up with a multiple page. For instance, you do have a, a 10 shutter or 10 blind, you're ending up with the 10 of these pages to control. You know, that is not gonna be very good. And I have a solution for that too. For the people that they do have echo, they can just call the different name, for instance, shade one, shade two, shade three, shade four, and then grouping them in the echo as a, for instance, uh, all of them as a blind. And then when you say blind on, blind on and blind off, the echo is gonna take care of it for you guys. For the people that they do not have an echo, uh, they can just go ahead. I do have a flag in my uh, sketch. You're setting up the flag right in here that it said all shutter in a right in a top. And then one of these server becoming the master. And instead of showing you right in here, when you opening them up, it's showing you sh shutter is closed or shutter is open. It's gonna show 
all shader are closed and all shader when clicking on it you can just control them with a one web server with a one address of course if you just go ahead and port forward this address and the port number and you use a ddns you can control it from anywhere in the world and for the people that they're using the echo of course when you are out of your house and for instance you do have a dog in your house and you want to close and open the shutter you just use your phone open your phone run the application for the uh, uh, amazon and then issue the command close and open and the shutter is going to get closed or open again i'm going to put some link for you guys after you finish with this sketch after you load you know it's just going to give you the feature of the web server you ending up with such a thing like this if you want to connect that one to the echo i do have another video that i put them out a year ago i leave the link in here for you guys to see uh, you can go over there and connect a, a server that you do have web server that you do have to the echo uh, I personally using the hub, they call them universal devices at home, and I use that one to connect you know, to the Echo. But that hub, it costs several hundred dollars, and it has a monthly fee for the portal. It could be free for you if you just take a look at the other video that I do have. And if you do have already the Amazon account, and Echo is easily with a couple of steps, and free you can connect your web server uh, to the amazon uh, echo and using the voice command to close and opening your shutter have a nice day after you uh, install your motor and you want to define how many turns do you need to uh, open and close the shutter or shade uh, what you do all the time leave the blind in the open position like this and then try to close it and see how many turns does it take that way you can adjust the number of the turn and by the way uh, since the power is not applied to the motor is no electromagnetic uh, friction uh, if the if you want to manually uh, close or open the shade since that you already pull the gear out you can just use your hand to pull this thing down or pulling them up and then manually this thing is going to work and typically using manually for the first time uh, to define how many turns you need to be applied to your motor based on the turn ratio that it does have and also uh, the motor driver to uh, shade get close or open you can close the shade up or you can close the shade down it's up to your choice